И сегодня у нас в студии Евгений Колбышев. Это тур-менеджер Джейси Смита. Джейси Смит – это бенд-лидер группы Джейси Смит Бенд. И первый вопрос я хотел задать Евгению. Евгений, расскажите, как вы сошлись вместе с Джейси Смитом и как проходит тур по России? Сошлись, в принципе, случайно. Я занимаюсь организации блюзовых туров давно, и получилось так, что в 2010 году должен был приехать и один музыкант, но, к сожалению, там по разным причинам тур был отменен, и была замена, в общем. И приехал вот Джей э, С. С тех пор мы с ним дружим, работаем, мы уже стали как братья, наверное, потому что этот тур... Я даже не помню, какой по счету по России уже запутался, по-моему, шестой или седьмой. Тур, он приезжает примерно раз, два раза в год, и тур такой происходит у нас. Этот тур самый большой, который был у него по России, и я думаю, что он вообще самый большой блюзовый тур, который в России когда кто-либо делал, проводил. Тем более в наше время в такое печальное. Значит, тур 17 городов России плюс Ереван и три концерта в Израиле. Всего там получается 20 чем-то концертов. Это очень большой тур, три, больше трех недель. И мы посчитали километраж, то есть он живет в Сан-Хосе в Калифорнии, так вот от дома до дома тур этот протяжение занимает 45 тысяч километров. Это больше, чем то есть окружность. То земли объехали. Зем... Да, да. Это очень, очень большой тур, и почти каждый день концерты. Вот сегодня у нас выходной, переездной день. Завтра в Архангельске, потом Москва, Воронеж, и потом уже Израиль. В общем, вот такой большой тур, и он, он был сделать не просто, но он получился, и, слава богу, проходит очень хорошо. А чему тур, тур посвящен? Выходу нового альбома? Он или... посвящен... Он посвящен Альбом нового но нет, он был в вторшем году вышел. Он ничему не посвящен, посвящен по его приезду. То есть у нас каждый месяц, на самом деле, каждый месяц а, у можно... меня есть торг брюзовый. Uh -huh. ну, а можно тогда спросить у вас, а как его в России встречают? То есть... а, хорошо. На самом деле, вот эти километраж там прочее, но еще есть цифры, там, примерно, по-моему, 120 концертов всего у него было в России, еще примерно... Примерно. Если бы в Вологде мы были, и во всех городах, где мы вот сейчас были, почти, почти во всех, это уже не первый раз. Если бы, например, плохо встречали, плохо проходили концерты его, то, наверное, местные промоутеры бы не приглашали больше. А поскольку мы вот так ездим, то есть там есть несколько городов, тот же там Архангельск, Москва, Новосибирск, Барнаул, ну, сибирские города, где ну, просто в каждом туре там концерты проходят. И вот это хорошо, потому что он сам по себе хороший, очень позитивный, э -э -э, такой активный, веселый и прочее. И публике это нравится. Мы вчера на концерте присутствовали, очень э -э, позитивно прошел. А, и тогда следующий вопрос Джейси. Э -э -э я побывал на вашем концерте, и меня потрясло одна вещь. То есть э -э вы э -э просто... Не в начале концерта остановили все и заставили публику подняться. То есть для меня это было удивительно. My first question to you will be the following one. So yesterday I was at your concert and I was really impressed at one thing when at the middle of the concert you asked the whole audience to stand up. <laughs> Are you tired? No, no. No, no, no. I thought you guys came to have a good time. Did you come here to have a good time? Did you pay money to come here tonight? Oh, then you should get your money's worth, right? You should get everything you paid for tonight, right? Because this is a rock and 
and roll national anthem I'm playing. Are you ready to have a good time? Yeah. I don't believe you. Everybody up. Everybody up. I want to see everybody out here stand up. Well, usually when I get people to stand up, it's to get them involved. You know, people come out to have a good time and they eat and they drink and they listen to music. But for me, the music is an exchange of energy, of good energy. And when people get up, that gives them permission to have a good time. As you notice, once people get up, they start moving, they start getting involved with what they're doing and they start forgetting about the problems. And that's my job is to take people out of the rough and tumble world to enjoy a concert for two hours. Also, if people come to my show, I always like them to leave with the experience. It's more than listening to music. It's an experience of enjoying themselves. На каких площадках вы больше любите работать? На больших или вот как вчера на маленьких? So next question uh, will be, so which stages uh, do you like better? Big ones? So big concert halls or just small ones, like yesterday? Well, the small ones are more intimate. And I'm going to play the same if there's one person in the room or a thousand. Какими артистами вы вдохновлялись, когда только-только начинали? I want to ask you, uh, so uh, which, uh, just what musicians inspired you when you were young, when you were young and you started playing? Well, before I started playing, I have to attribute it to my mother and my father. Um, see, my father was a country blues guitar player, but I didn't know that until I got older. But, uh, you know, I was born in 1955. So when I was a young child, my sister was 18 years old and she would have to come and babysit me. So she couldn't go dancing with her friends. So she would turn on the television and dance with me. And that's where I got exposed to Chuck Berry and Little Richard and, and those guys when, at an early age. So. Then, of course, in 1964, I saw the Beatles, and that's what I wanted to do, like millions of other <laughs> kids that wanted to be. Я еще читал из вашей биографии, что вы в определенный момент поменяли барабаны на гитару. Что тогда с вами произошло? So I read so some extracts from your biography. So and I read about the fact that one day you changed, you switched from uh, the drum to the guitar. What happened? <laughs> well, <laughs> first of all, I got tired of carrying so much equipment. Number one, <laughs> that's a lot to carry. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be like you're in the military when you set up drums. Mm -hmm. You're first to get there and you're last to leave. Mm -hmm. But um, the truth is, I've promised my father that I would be a guitar player someday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I would take his music farther than it ever went. Mm -hmm. And so I got really motivated. I learned a couple of songs, mm -hmm. and then I'd go to a jam session in Oakland, California, mm -hmm. and I learned how to play mm -hmm. uh, for what I what it's worth to what I do now. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not a serious student of guitar because there's a lot of great guitar players up there. And I'm just kind of lucky, and I like entertaining, so that's where I get my biggest satisfaction. And it's hard to do that from the back of a drum set. Mm -hmm. So guitar is your major, yes, instrument. Yeah, that's that's what I do now. At, at some shows, I'll play drums, I'll mm -hmm. play a solo mm -hmm. or something, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't uh, work as a drummer much. Mm -hmm. A friend, a friend of mine called me, and mm -hmm. I played a few shows in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, mm -hmm. California, with them, but. Um, there's a lot of emotion that you can put into a guitar mm -hmm. and it has a voice and it becomes your voice. Mm -hmm. Drums is a style and you can take on multiple styles. There's great drummers, mm -hmm. especially here in Russia. I played with some of the mm -hmm. best drummers I ever played with, but guitar gives you another voice. Mm -hmm. And if you look at guys like B.B. Mm -hmm. King, opposed to a lot of the guys that are major shredders that can play 50 million notes. B.B. Mm -hmm. King, Freddie King, or Albert King, mm -hmm. they could play one note mm -hmm. and
crush you because it's a feeling and it's an emotion. And with the guitar, you can deliver your emotion that will touch someone else and they can feel it too. По вашему мнению, какую сейчас функцию выполняет музыка? So, uh, just uh, let us go in on speaking about music. And my next question will be, so what is the function of music at present, in your opinion? Uh, it's the truth, especially the blues. The blues is truth. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they call it three chords and the truth. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, it says things that people never could say on their own. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel things that your heart desires to let out, but you don't know how. It takes you away from day-to-day -day problems, or it also explains and expresses the day-to-day -day problems or cures for the problems. It's life. And it is one of the best things ever created to bring more people together from so many different walks of life and enjoy one thing at one time и я как знаю, что вы номинант на Грэмми. Что для вас такое номинация на Грэмми? So I know that you were nominated for Grammy Award. What does it mean for you, this award? Well, it It's means nominated. everything. Basically, I was on the list with a bunch of other people and we didn't make the final nomination cut. Mm -hmm. But I've been on the list twice and that means the world to me that people in the industry the world over, at least in the United States, are actually looking at what I've done mm -hmm. and that part of my life and that piece of art that I delivered to consider it for the highest musical award. So it means a lot. It means that I've created some good music. <laughs> so just great, great thing for you. Yeah, uh, you know, and the Grammy's one thing. Um, I think if I was ever nominated for a mm -hmm. People's Choice Award mm -hmm. where everybody can vote, mm -hmm. I think that would mean more to me because the Grammys, of course, it's the industry and some people in the industry. Um, and music is for the world, not just for a few mm -hmm. to decide whether your music is great or not. So you would like, yes, to be nominated, uh, so among just like audience choice in this nomination? Pe People's Choice Awards, because mm -hmm. what, ha what has happened mm -hmm. with the Grammys It is just a few people at the top, yeah. and it's all money, you know, because you look at all the people that are nominated, Beyonce mm -hmm. and the same people yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. And then what they've done with blues is they've shrunk the category mm -hmm. so much, they just put so many people in there. When I first was nom uh, uh, listed, mm -hmm. they had traditional blues, mm -hmm. contemporary blues, folk blues. Now they just throw it all in one thing. So. Mm -hmm. It, it feels bad because you're competing against different artists mm -hmm. in different genres mm -hmm. of the blues instead of your separate individual talent. Mm -hmm. That being said, it was still some of my proudest times to mm -hmm. see my name on the list with all these other mm -hmm. artists. So. Такой вопрос у нас уже традиционно идет. А что вы пожелаете э, молодым исполнителям, которые, ну, может, хотят добиться каких-то ваших уже поставленных целей? So, and our traditional question will be the following. So what would you advise our young musicians or just musicians in the world who want to achieve your fame, your top, just your name probably in the future? <laughs> well, don't get frustrated, first of all, mm -hmm. and always express yourself and be true to your art. And when people will tell you that you can't mm -hmm. show yourself that you can. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people that will never achieve any type of fame. Mm -hmm. The fame that I've gotten here in this country, I have to attribute to mm -hmm. Mr. Kovashov yes. because mm -hmm. I ended up here on a fluke, but now I've done over a hundred and I think 20 tours, if I count right, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, shows with this gentleman. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, There's some luck involved, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of hard work. And there's some people that will never sound great. They will never be the person that they think they are in their mind. Mm -hmm. But still, you should be able to express yourself, because it was given to the world, and you should use it. Спасибо. Пожалуйста. Вчера на концерте, кроме 
в блюзовых композициях звучали рок-н-ролльные темы Чака Берри, ну и много очень заводных композиций. Это дань уважения музыкантам или вы всегда используете в концерте как некий разогрев у публики, ну, которая знает точно эти композиции? So yesterday at your concert, so I listened to not only just blues melodies, but uh, Chuck Berry's ones, rock and roll ones. Uh, so do you use just uh, this part? Is it your usual part? Just some rock and roll things in your concert or just your choice for, well, the, for the evening? For basically, one? there's one thing that we have in common, and that's Chuck Berry. You know, that's the, to me, it's the rock and roll national anthem to me uh, for the world over. And, uh, you know, when I want to get people motivated, everybody is familiar with that song. And what I've resigned to the fact of doing, because I used to play real traditional stuff, mm -hmm. and then I'd play some other stuff too, but the area where I grew up in and the music that I've listened to has an influence on me. So... Now, I try not to be put in any box. I'm a blues artist, but I allow myself the freedom to play anything that I want. And if I deliver it and the people like it, that's what matters. So it's typical for me to come out with something different. And there's one other thing I want to say about the music that I choose. Chuck Berry changed the sound of guitar. He took some stuff that he heard, like T-Bone Walker and other guys, and just played it to the extreme and wrote different songs. And he was on Chess Records, which was the biggest blues record uh, company that was the Chicago Blues was known for. It was all from Chess Records. And then I also played a Rolling Stones song last night. And if it wasn't for the Rolling Stones being a blues band and taking the name from Muddy Waters, In the 60s, the blues would have died then. So guys like the Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton who enjoyed Freddie King and guys like that brought back and gave to the world where the roots of rock and roll came from because that's the baby of the blues is rock and roll. Well, the Stones did record a, a CD. They recorded a, a, a record at Chess because when they started, they were playing Howling Wolf, mm -hmm. Muddy Waters, songs like that. You know, uh, a lot of Willie Dixon songs. They were a blues band. Mm -hmm. And they wanted the name Rolling Stones from Muddy Waters' song, I'm a Man. So they were really a, a blues band when they started. And um, what they did is they brought blues to another audience. They played it their way. <laughs> Ну, может, я к Евгению еще вопрос хотел задать. Вы считаетесь одним из лучших э, менеджеров, турменеджеров в России, э, которые привозят музыкантов э, стиля джаза и блюза. А как вы находите их? Я, э, они меня находят, на самом деле. По-разному. То есть есть, есть вот, у меня есть в данный момент, как бы там, в работе, те, с кем я работаю, 27 проектов. Американские, европейские, израильские, там с разных стран, даже из Аргентины. И многих я уже давно знаю, как Джей Си. У нас есть музыкант, один Роберт Лайтхаус, который возим, у него был уже 19 туров в России. Соответственно, те, кто, с кем я давно дружу, они помогают мне. То есть, допустим, Джей Си, вот Шерн Льюис, которая в феврале, это через Джей Си нашлись мы друг друга. Там Дейт Рафар великолепная певица, там тоже как-то через музыкантов, то есть в основном так. И плюс э, очень много приложений сейчас стоит там из всех стран, которые следят за нами, как для движения в России, потому что музыкантам хочется в России, несмотря ни на что. И поэтому находим иногда, просто мне хочется какого-то музыканта хорошего, и приходится искать там пути на него, на его менеджмент, там еще что-то, по-разному. Спасибо вам большое. Я, наверное, хотел бы поблагодарить Джейси uh, Смита за то, что он uh, принял участие в записи передачи, uh, за прекраснейший концерт. Uh, ждем мы от него и его группы новую музыку, ну и ждем на раз в следующем году. So, uh, so JC, so I'd like to thank you for our interview first of all, and then for your concert yesterday. 
Thank you very much. So we are waiting for you next year here with, with, new, with a new concert. <laughs> I go where the boss tells me to go. He's my fearless leader. He has done so much for my career and he showed me Russia. And one thing I have to say, the people are wonderful in this country and the countries that I've visited. I don't talk politics because politic politics are for politicians. We're simple people and we enjoy a lot of the same things and that's one thing that we can do is have a same emotion at the same time. So I want to thank you guys for having me in this country first of all and in this, this studio. I could talk for hours about the different aspects of music but I think I'll shut up and, uh, and go have lunch. So thank you, and thank you, Eugene, for everything that you've done for me all this time. He has done so much, and if you get a chance to see one of his concerts coming, because he works with so many different artists like Sharon Lewis and Corey Harris, and he's bringing the real stuff, you know, and it'll be crazy as I am, or it'll be somebody like Corey Harris um, uh, or Guy Davis that's playing the traditional just guitar, so it's worth seeing. That's a lot to say, sorry. <laughs>